All right, so in this one, I'm going to be doing an extraction and immediate implant placement. So let's go ahead and walk you through this step by step, just in plain English. So what I'm using right here is a spade elevator. What we're doing basically is just going circumferentially around the tooth. You want to make sure to just kind of dig this in circumferentially. You just go bit by bit around the tooth, making sure that you get some separation of the soft tissue that's attached to that tooth. You're essentially just trying to separate that soft tissue from the tooth. And after you separate that, then you're just trying to see if you can wedge this between the bone and the tooth. So because it's got a pointy end, it's kind of easy for it to get a, to get like a, a purchase to like lodge itself right in between the bone and the tooth. And then you're able to just wiggle it back and forth and just kind of get, give uh, gentle pushes and dig it deeper and deeper. So because this tooth is, it's basically like a, like a cone shape, right? It's basically a cone. So it's going to be really easy for you to, to just push. And as you push, it's actually going to be um, bringing that tooth up, right? So as you push that into the wedge, it's going to sort of dislodge the tooth in the socket and bring that whole thing up. You're not going to do it in, you know, in one movement. Uh, this is kind of like an incremental thing where you go around and you push bit by bit. But you see, I'm already getting some some tooth movement. You see that tooth? It's already um, it's already a bit displaced, and it's going to be easier to dislodge now. So I generally work at this a little bit, depending on on the tooth, uh, depending on the mo mobility of it, and how how easy it is to to actually get some get more mobility. I'll I'll spend a good five ten minutes on this, maybe maybe closer to five. All right, so now that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna, um, now I'm gonna use my elevators. And you see, first I put my elevator straight up perpendicular to the tooth. And I put pressure against the adjacent tooth. And you, you do wanna be careful. Um, this is not the only way that you use this elevator, right? This is just the way that I start. So I put it perpendicular to the tooth and I rotate clockwise. Um, if I had more tooth structure there, I would also rotate counterclockwise. But you rotate uh, clockwise, just straight perpendicular. I go to the other side and I rotate um, clockwise and counterclockwise. Actually, I guess in the other side, it would just be counterclockwise. Um, so this is coming just at a straight 90 degree angle perpendicular to the tooth. And once this does get some mobility, then I start to change the angle so that I'm not coming at it at a straight 90 degrees. Then I start bringing that down a bit. And as I bring it down, it pushes that tooth upwards so you can see me sort of kind of like coming down a little bit um but i just give this give this um a little bit of time and you do want to make sure to be careful for the adjacent teeth um i've the, the adjacent tooth i've i've um had situations where i've accidentally dislodged a crown next door <clears throat> all right that looks like it's pretty mobile now i'm going in with these forceps and it's important to know the shape of the tooth when you're picking your, um, when you're deciding what to do with the forceps. So this tooth, it's, it's, a, it's a cone. And so you can just do some rotational movement. You can do a little bit of buccal lingual here. Uh, and rotation is going to work great because it's a cone shape. You try to rotate molars or something, and that's, that's just not going to work. But there we go. The tooth is out nice and easy. I mean, this is an easy tooth for anybody to pull, though. You know, first first year dental student could pull that tooth. Now I'm coming in with a curette because you always want to clean. You want to debride the tooth socket because, I mean, the tooth needed to be extracted for a reason. And generally when there's infections, um, you're going to have some buildup of some infection, infected tissue at the, the base of this socket. So I'm going to debride a bit, and I'm also going to irrigate with some saline. We don't use really chlorhexidine. Uh, saline is the is the material of choice that you, what we use for irrigation. All right, there wasn't that much material to to remove in this one, so just kind of speeding through that a little bit. Cool. So now I'm getting my first drill, and this drill, I'm just placing it in the socket just to approximate how deep that socket is. You're looking at about 
uh, 13 right there, right at that line. It's about 13 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and irrigate, clean that out. And because it's approximately 13, I'm thinking that maybe I could just place the implant in and just see if it engages just like that. So I'm just going to give that a shot just real quick because it looks like it's it's really similar. But the socket is really similarly sized to this implant. But when I'm trying to I'm trying to engage this a little bit, it looks like it will it should um get prepped a little bit because it's not uh this is dense bone and you're not really going to just uh thread an implant in there and get it to engage. So I am going to prep just a little bit. So essentially with an immediate implant, you're not really needing to prep most of the socket, right? Like the, the coronal half is essentially not getting prepped. So I, I, I thought I would just drill, uh, drill with that last drill, but you know what? I'm just going to go through the whole sequence and that way I can make sure to, um, to really, um, do the drilling depths and drilling directions exactly the way I, I intend it to be. So <clears throat> I'm using this extender. So you see, I, I tried drilling without an extender. I took it out, I switched, and I put an extender on. Um, I, I'll find that I usually use extenders for anterior teeth uh, with lots of irrigation, as you can see. So we're starting with the white drill. Um, every implant system has a protocol, right? And this is just the, the, first, the first drill in the implant club protocol. So using the white drill here before moving on to my next size drill. Oops, still using the white drill. Um, I, you know, usually when I, when I do my first prep, I'll prep a little bit and then see if I'm happy with angulation, see if I'm happy with where it's at. And then once I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and make that prep deeper and, and firmer. All right, moving on here. We're moving on to the gray drill. So just basically putting it in that same, that same point where the white drill was at and just making it just a little bit wider. The reason for using all the drills and sequential drilling is just because you make sure that you follow the path that you intend to use. Moving on to the, the green drill here, and I'm making sure that I just follow the exact paths that I've already set up, still using that extender. And again, I'm only prepping like the bottom third uh, of the implant site. I don't know if you noticed, but I tried to use the pink drill, but it came dislodged from my extender. I put it back on and now we're ready to go. So making this final prep, this is the final drill in the drilling protocol for this size implant. And now we are ready to rock and roll, placing the implant in. All right, you can see I'm just placing the implant here. This is an implant club implant. It's got this little thumb grip on it and all I have to do is rotate it in. And it looks like the bone is pretty dense. And because it's dense, um, sometimes you just have to use one drill size up. And it's basically the same with any implant system. If you have dense bone, uh, the system encourages you just to drill a little bit wider. And it makes a lot of sense, right? If the, bo if the bone is not really, um, uh, doesn't have much give to it, uh, you, you have to widen it up a little bit just to get your implant to go in. So I'm using the next drill size up. Uh, to to place that that implant in there. So it's as easy as that. Now I'm going to come back with the implant and place that again, not before irrigating, of course. Irrigation here is super important. Remove all those all those bone chips, and now we're ready to place that implant back on. That's why you see the implant's already wet and it's got a little bit of bone on, a little bit of blood on it. Okay, same method as before, but now it actually goes into place, and I just kind of rotate it in there. Uh, let me use this little thumb grip, and once the implant engages, that thumb grip just pops off. So there we go. Boom. It's right where I want it to be. And now the next step is just to take this little transfer off. It's really easy to do. So that that the purpose of that green bit is basically just to transfer the implant from the from the packaging to the socket. Once the implant's engaged in the socket, I just take that thing off. Now you want to evaluate the depth of your implant platform. You generally want your platform to be three millimeters apical to the adjacent tooth's CEJ. So here I'm going to do just a little bit of fine tuning, right? So just a little bit of fine tuning with this wrench. I'm just taking the implant a little bit deeper. You generally just have to go a little bit deeper after you've done your initial placement. And when you're happy with it, you can go ahead and put your uh, cover screw or healing abutment on. I could have put a healing abutment on in this case, but this guy, he's a smoker. I have placed um, 
four other implants on him and they have been very successful, but I still don't trust it because uh, I'm a smoker. I want to make sure that the, this implant is buried. And so I put a little cover screw on there. The cover screw is small. Healing abutments are large. Um, the cover screw is basically just flat. And now because I don't trust it still, I'm going to put a little collagen plug. I just cut a collagen plug in half and I squished it. And I'm going to use this as kind of like a band-aid in case this guy tries anything funny that's going to um, impair the healing, impair the integration of this implant. So I'm just taking that collagen plug and sticking it in there. I do the same exact thing for socket grafting. Uh, for socket grafting, I'll put some particulate bone and I'll use this as a little band-aid over the top. All right, so I got my collagen plug in there and I'm just going to, I'll show you right here how I do a figure eight um, suture. So it's just going to be one suture. Uh, I'm not doing multiple interrupted sutures. It's just going to be one and that will hold everything in place. So I pass one through here on one side of the buckle. I'm coming out in the lingual on the same side. Coming out the lingual on the same side. All right, got it. And now I like to make sure things are, are nice and clean while I'm doing this. So you might want to dab a little bit of gauze. Um, and sometimes you have to, you have to tuck that, that um, collagen plug in a little bit just so it kind of sits uh, under the tissue. You want know, to be careful that when you're passing the the needle tip, that it doesn't poke the poke the you know the collagen plug out. Sometimes it it dislodges it. This part, um, I guess, the trickiest part to all this is just not dislodging your your um, collagen plug and also keeping your sutures organized. Because if you have them seated, you know, if you have them on top of each other, they can kind of hold each other down, tie each other down. So you want to make sure that you have good. Um, management here of your of your suture ends and that's where an assistant comes in a good assistant will hold your hold the tail of the suture and make sure to help you pass it and uh, kind of jump in to make sure that the that the sutures are tidy as well and not like all on top of each other sometimes i do have to adjust i'll use like a little explorer or something just to to slightly adjust where the sutures lay because they they won't always lie directly on top of of the the uh, collagen plug sometimes they'll just kind of get squished off to the sides all right so here's where the figure this is where the the x comes in right um, there we go that's where the x comes in you just tie it up right there you want to pull it tight but not too tight because you don't want the tissue to rip and that is it my friends that's going to be it right there that's the final knot right there we're going to cut that off i'm going to dab it just to Oh, wait, no, one more knot. Uh, I'm going to dab it, and that's it. This implant's going to be ready to restore in three to four months. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it. This this kind of immediate placement is a piece of cake slam dunk. Uh, pretty much not a ton that can go wrong with a case like that. Um, except for vasculature. So you want to know your anatomy, know your vasculature uh, towards the apex of the implant. Uh, know your nerves. Know you're safe and then and then it's gonna be easy peasy. Alright guys, see you next time.